Hi, this is John from the Garmin Marine Team, and today we want to talk about transducers. Yep, transducers. These little guys aren't the coolest and newest gear on the market, but without a properly installed transducer, your cool new sonar will not function at its best. Transducers are the eyes, or more accurately, the ears, of your sonar system. The transducer converts an electrical pulse from the sounder into sound waves that bounce off objects under the boat. The transducer then converts the sound energy of those echoes back to an electrical pulse, which is returned to the sounder. The sounder measures the time between the pulse of sound and the return of the echo. It converts the data into an image on your display screen and can depict the bottom and the location of any fish. Getting the transducer installed properly so that it works in all conditions and speeds is one of the most critical parts of installing a sonar system. But this critical step is often overlooked. In fact, the number one complaint that we hear at Garmin is, my sonar doesn't work well, and the leading cause turns out to be improper transducer installation. With any transducer installation, the key is to get the water to flow smoothly over the face of the transducer and to minimize any turbulence or air bubbles. The transducer signal will not shoot through air, so the goal is to mount the transducer so that it is always in smooth water with no air bubbles. In addition, you want to mount the transducer so the face of the transducer is pointing straight down at the bottom of the ocean. If the transducer beam is angled to one side, it will not reflect off the bottom of the ocean and return a signal to the transducer, and you'll lose bottom lock. So let's take a moment to help you decide which transducer is right for your boat and your style of boating. Garmin has developed a great brochure that gives all the details about our transducers, the brochure is available as a download from Garmin's website by going to any one of our sounder products and clicking on the quick link that says Transducer Selection Guide. The first thing you should decide about your transducer is how or where you're going to mount it. You can choose between transom mount, trolling motor mount, in-haul mount, through-haul, or pocket-mounted transducers. Transom mounted transducers are used on many trailer boats as this keeps the transducer out of the way of the trailer rollers. It is also easy to install or remove and works well on smaller outboard powered boats. However, transom mount transducers will not work on boats with inboard engines as the props are further forward and produce a tremendous amount of disturbed water over the face of the transducer. Trolling motor mounts for your transducer are included with many Garmin fish finders and are a great option for fishermen who will be using a trolling motor while fishing. This puts the transducer right at the front of the boat and gives the fisherman an idea of what is right below his feet. In-hull transducers, or shoot-through-the-hull transducers, are a great idea because you don't have to drill any holes in the bottom of the boat to mount the transducer. Additionally, the deucer won't be damaged by trailer rollers or submerged objects or subject to marine growth. However, this installation is only recommended for boats with solid fiberglass construction. It won't work with cord hulls, steel hulls, or wooden hulls. Through-hull transducers can be divided into two categories, flush mounts and external mounts. Flush-mounted transducers, as you can probably guess, sit flush to the bottom of the hull and produce very little drag. They're often installed on sailboats due to their minimal drag. A recent innovation in flush mount transducers is the tilted element transducer. Inside the body of the transducer, the transducer element is tilted at either 12 degrees or 20 degrees from horizontal. When these transducers are mounted in the hull, the angle of the transducer face closely matches the dead rise of the hull, and the result is that the transducer face points almost directly towards the ocean floor to optimize the performance. The advantage of the tilted element transducer is that you do not need a large fairing block to keep the transducer face level, making the installation a lot easier. An external through-hull transducer, as the name suggests, is mounted on the outside of the hull. The included fairing block is cut to match the dead rise of the hull, and the transducer tucks up inside that fairing block. The fairing block smooths the water flow over the face of the transducer and orients the transducer face parallel with the ocean floor. The last type of transducer is the pocket mount. This kind of installation is the most labor intensive, but can yield very good performance at higher speeds. With a pocket mount installation, a hole or pocket is created in the bottom of the hull to exactly match the size of the transducer. When the transducer body is placed in that pocket, the face of the transducer sits level with the bottom of the hull, promoting very smooth water flow over the face of the transducer. 
ideal conditions to get the best performance from your sonar. No matter what mounting style you choose for your transducer, Garmin strongly recommends that you use an authorized Garmin dealer to do the installation. You can find authorized installers near you by clicking on Find a Store or Dealer at the bottom of Garmin's website and just typing in your zip code. Okay, so now that you've looked at the various mounting options, let's look at another important consideration, the power output of the transducers. Make sure you check the specs on your sonar to confirm its maximum power output. There's no sense in buying an expensive 2000 watt transducer if your sonar is only capable of putting out 500 watts. Installing a more powerful transducer allows the boater to find the bottom or the fish in deeper water. The stronger the transducer's output, the deeper it can go. A good rule of thumb is to take the power output, let's say 600 watts, and double that to get a good estimate of maximum depth, in this case about 1200 feet. Another advantage of the higher power transducer is their larger size allows for more elements inside the transducer. More elements means more sensitivity and greater opportunity to receive the return echo from fish or other structure. However, the higher the power, the higher the cost. So you'll have to decide how much power you really need. Another consideration when choosing a transducer is the material from which it's made. These two transducers are exactly the same style and performance. But this one is made from reinforced plastic, while this one is made out of bronze. Plastic through hulls are fine in fiberglass hulls, but you would not want to install them in wooden boats as the hull could swell and crush the transducer. Bronze through hulls are fine for fiberglass and wood hulls, but you would not want to install them in metal hulls due to corrosion issues. One final consideration to think about is transducer frequency. Most existing sonars are only able to ping on fixed frequencies, normally 200 kHz for better shallow water resolution and 50 kHz for deeper water penetration. So when you buy a transducer for these sonars, you're stuck with 50 and 200 kilohertz. Recently, Garmin developed a spread spectrum sonar, the GSD-26, that sweeps across an entire frequency band and is no longer bound to just a single frequency like the old sonars. The performance advantage that this new sonar offers is truly amazing. However, it does mean you have to make one more decision when you are shopping transducers for the GSD-26. The new GSD-26 transducers come in either a low, medium, or a low, high combination. The low frequency chirps from about 30 kilohertz to 65 kilohertz for the best deep water performance. The medium frequency varies from about 80 to 130 kilohertz, while the high frequency scans the water from about 130 kilohertz to 210 kilohertz. The low medium combination would be better for those who fish deep water exclusively as it can sound deeper while the low-high combination would be better if you fish deep and shallow water, as the high-frequency side will give you better target separation in shallow water. So, there you have the basics for choosing a transducer. Mounting style, power, material, and frequency. Don't forget, you can get a lot more information about our transducers by downloading this brochure from Garmin's website. If you have any questions about transducers or any of Garmin's marine products, please check out our website at garmin.com forward slash marine or ask any one of our marine dealers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the water.